Good day and welcome to Kujo Sound. This is a follow up forward slash part 2 of my previous video on some basic Unity audio tool scripting. The smooth liquid butter voice coming at you right now is the voice of Bjorn Jacobson. 37 years old, 2 kids, married, sound designer at a AAA company and I am your host here today as usual here on Kujo Sound. If you're brand new to this stuff I post here, then I advise you to check out part one of this Unity Audio Tool series. The link is in the description below. Hey, if you really are brand new to this, why not hit the subscribe and like button on your way down there when you're looking for the link? Feels so weird having to say this in every video, but it has to be done. For some obscure reason, my Visual Studio isn't firing up today as I wanted it to, so this episode will all be scripted in MonoDevelop, the editor that comes with Unity. If you, like me, is not a coder, you may, just like me, not give a damn about that. It's just a text editor. Let's address some of the issues that may occur when you make a script like I did in my last video. Because there, we just wanted to create a box collider with an emitter to follow our listener. First, I have created a sound here, a 5.1 sound, which you can now hear and walk into and see here how the meter shows that it spreads nicely when you are inside the collider. That is because the attenuation we gave it only allows for full spatulization when you're within one meter of the emitter. And when we leave the collider, the sound fades out over the maximum distance that we set in its properties, just like a normal 3D sound should. But to a great surprise, you might notice that when we're outside of the box collider, the sound doesn't pan when we move the camera around. This is because we placed the listener on our character. And you will know, because if we turn the character, the sound pans. We place the listener on the character to avoid the issue of having the camera move around in and out of the collider if the character would be standing right on the border of the collider. And for some obscure reason, during the recording of this video, Visual Studio decided to actually work. So we will do our scripting anyway in Visual Studio. Hey, it's just a text editor, right? The solution I have created for this is to still have the listener located on the character, but have it use the rotation of the camera. To do so, we need to make sure that our listener's rotation is not relative to that of the character at any time. Because if it is, then moving the camera will only make things worse. Let's create a new game object. To where we will move our listener. And here we will create a script that will tell it what we want to do. Moving the audio listener to a new game object like this creates another issue. which is called a dependency. A dependency is what it is. When something depends on something else. In this case, our other audio script depends on our listener to be physically on the character because we hard-coded it to look for it right there. This needs to be solved as well, and we will do that last in this video. The very first thing we need to do is to make sure that this script cannot be attached to an object that doesn't automatically have an audio listener attached to it. So, require component, type of audio listener. First, for the second time, we want it to follow the character around, so its transform position is a vector 3 value that should be equal to the ones of the main character. Instead of using privates and hard coding the location of these objects, we will this time use public values. When using a public value in your script, you will get a value shown over here in your inspector. This means that you can drag and drop any item that contains the needs you specified in the script, and in this case, it's just a game object. This is really useful if you want to change the value or have some sort of flexibility when building your level and audio setup later on. If we press play now, you will see that the highlighted audio listener in the scene will move with our character, but not rotate at all. So secondly, we want it to rotate in the camera's rotation by setting its transform.rotation equal to the vector three values of the camera's rotation. In that way, we now have a listener which has its own game object and is not relative to anything else but the two values that we have just given it. If we press play now, you will see the same highlighted listener follow the player but then also rotate as I rotate the camera. 
you can even hear that the panning is working as intended. Because we use public variables for the camera and the character, we can now be more flexible about moving things around and changing objects if you need to. The problem with private values is that they cannot be changed just like that. For coders, it's easy to navigate around a lot of private values, but we, as designers, would like it to be more flexible as a tool, so we want as many public ones as possible. Over time, I have come to peace with it and started making more private ones just to keep the tool more neat looking in the inspector window. Because we used a private value to search for our audio listener in our previous script for the ambient area, we should now go back and change this by making it public, so that we can manually state where our audio listener is. We find where our listener is defined, it is so here with a private statement, we change the private to public, and then we alter these two lines down here in our start void with two forward slashes in the beginning of the sentence, making sure that they are ignored by the code. This means that we will now use the publicly stated listener value that we state out here in the inspector, rather than the one that we have hard-coded our script to use. This is far more efficient in the long run. That's it for this brief video on how to solve the issue with spatulization when you move your listener and camera around like that. I hope you learned something from it and got some ideas as to how you can move stuff around and make things relative to one another, if that's what rocks your socks. Thank you for watching another episode of Kucho Sound, Unity Audio Tools. If you were brand new to this channel in the beginning of the video, you really should check out the other episode and find the link in the description below, and while you're at it, hit the subscribe and like button while you're moving down there. Speaking of subscribing, if you really like this content and use it, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I spend on creating all this content. There you will also find links to all my previous videos, articles, talks, and more. I hope you enjoyed this video and my odd non-Danish English accent voice over it. See you next time. Bjorn Jacobson and Kujo Sound, signing out.